Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender as an app. So today we're going to get started by talking about one of the things we talked in the previous, previous week, which has to do with Blender's EV volume render. So with Blender 2.93 opened right here, I would actually show you guys how this one works. We've already talked about the fact that Blender Cycles supports volumetric rendering and we've also seen that EV does support this, but it doesn't really give you so much, so much results. So what we have here is a simple scene from an amazing tool known as Embergen. And if I simply just roll this all the way back, press the playback button, we've gone through and exported this particular one. So this one that we have exported, I did save this file before, so I'm just simply going to go ahead and open this. It's called Volume Test. And you can see what we have here. By default, this scene was done specifically for cycles. And of course, you can see the kind of results that we're getting. But if we choose to switch this over to you know, EV and hit the render button, you would notice that this is what we're getting. But the folks at Blender Foundation have actually gone through to make this in even way better. So instead of getting this result, if you scroll all the way down right now and you go over to volumetrics and you scroll all the way down again and you turn on the volumetric shadow, you will be getting something like this. Now, in the previous times, there was uh, something that had to do with the shadows was not casting properly. You were not getting exactly the kind of volumes you wanted, but now you can even get way more stuff. If you go over to the tiles and switch this to two, you see you have more stuff. If you go down to the sample and actually crank this, let's say we want this to be about five, one, two sampling, we get something like that. And at the same time, you can also increase the sampling from here. So we can also choose to make this one a bit more. So I can set this to 1024 so we can get way more cooler stuff like this. So depending on what you would like to get, you can actually crank these things and you can see that you have a pretty cool result. Something you would notice with the UI is right now, there is a very tiny button that would help you lock your camera by default if you switch and tap zero on your keyboard and you get this camera you have to go over to view and then click on this button to lock your camera to view but all of that is changing all of that is changing because right now there's a tiny button here so instead of you know pressing n on your keyboard going over to view locking your camera doing all that no way you need to just simply switch over to your camera right now and click on this button and that way you have all of this stuff for you and if you press the home key you have this all in full screen and then you have av rendering your volume as cool as it can get so with this said there's also some other cool updates that i would like to show you guys so if i simply switch this back to our default scene and we have this there's also a hovering update or hovering shortcut key that is now available for all of the mesh modifiers that we have and you know and we love so if we go all the way and simply throw in a simple wireframe and crank this all the way up by default you have to click on this button to hit the apply button but now all of that is changing at this point if you hover around the modifier and tap ctrl and a you can accept that and if you also hit shift and d right now you can also have this one here Previously, this was taken out, but right now it's good to see that it's back. No need to do this all the time. You can just simply hover around and tap Shift and D or Control and A to simply accept things like this. So let's talk about, we're looking at the fact that light contribution to the volumetric is now even better for your entire scene. So if we switch over to our shader editor, click right here, switch this to the world. The folks at Blender Foundation have actually implemented something that is really cool. You can now use lights and play with the volumes that you have in your scene. So for example, with a simple scene like this, if we go in and grab a volume scatter and we click right here, click and connect this one, you notice that we have nothing, okay? Let's switch over to Eevee and see these bad boys. Now by default, all right, by default, what happens is you have a simple point light like so. Let's go over here, make sure that it's about that size and you don't see anything. So if you start cranking the density down, all right? So if you start cranking the density down, you would notice that you have this sort of, you know, um, volumetric scattering something that is cool right now is if you switch this so let's make a copy of this so if you switch this to your area light at this point you can now contribute to the volume all right so you can now contribute to the volume and you can use this to do some cooler stuff so if i also select a simple point light as well we can also contribute to the volume i could say maybe i don't want this point light to contribute that much and i can crank this down and you can see what contribution it has and we can also select this one and crank it all the way up and get that kind of contribution and because this is an area light it means that it should have length and breadth and you know have some x and y kind of axis and it's cool to see that we have that right here so we can use this to increase all right, so right now we can increase this 
and you can get this sort of lamp kind of feature and this one is cool so if you also select this and press 2 on your keyboard you can even crank this even way more so it's not just limited to you getting just one you can also select it and maybe crank about 10 and get something crazy maybe set this to 0.5 and even get something cooler and this is for EV okay you're not even doing anything with cycles right now this is just EV so let's talk about cycles so what's the cool thing with cycles cycles now have a very cool feature that can help you spread lights by simply using the aerial lights if we switch these from cycles to ev or from ev to cycles some of the parameters that we have here will change so if we go right here and switch this from ev jump over to cycles you notice that we have this you know cycling let's actually switch this to gpu and get some good and faster results from that now if you go back here you would notice a couple of stuff changed right here you'd notice we have a new parameter called the beam shape now this beam shape is responsible for how much light we can get to spread around a given surface by simply using the lamp or you know by simply using the area light so what can we do what we can do is uh what we can do is simple let's rotate this to a given axis Control z that bad boy and rotate this right about a point like that and uh yeah so if we would like this to spread around you can now control this right here now this some way somehow is tied to the size of the object that you're working with now to actually get a better understanding of this let's scale this all the way up let's zoom right in so the shape of the object that you have sort of influences how the spread happens so if i set this to about three for example you can see that we have that but we can also try as much as possible to spread to the bounds that we can and we can still go ahead and crank this one down and you can use this for your next shot you can use this for you know whatever you're doing let's turn that light off and you can use this for some very cool stuff so let's say you want to create a scene or a shot like this yep you can actually go ahead use this one and do some very lovely stuff with this and you can switch back and crank this spread all the way out just in case you want to spread these things you know you want to spread some love this is uh this is very very nice now speaking about spreading some love the folks at blender foundation have also spread or you know they are spreading a couple of love i think they're spreading way more love than we actually thought they will they're spreading a lot of love to the geometry node so let's switch back and talk about this bad boy geometry node real quick so the geometry node now has some very cool stuff we already talked about the spreadsheet that was cool right now they've actually made things even better so right now if you are into bullying stuff all right right now you're definitely going to find this one very cool if you open up the geometry node right now you would notice that we have a tv like icon here if you want these things to be displayed within the spreadsheet you need to click on this button so that you'll be able to preview whatever end results that you have within your spreadsheet so this is a this is a very cool one and it's cool to see that it's here if you go over to your geometry nodes right now and type in the word boolean you would notice that we have a multi boolean insertion point there is something that you might need to know about this one right so and that is that at any point in time you would like to create stuff so let's say we want to create something like a cone for example and uh, we just want to wire this cone right here you would see that because we are doing a differentiation boolean this is the result that we have let's go ahead and turn on the wireframe bad boy and see that okay so you can see what we have cool but then if you switch this from you know difference to union that disappears now the reason is simple union means you're kind of joining stuff together these are the one that has to do with difference means that you're looking at two objects and you're trying to calculate the difference from them both so that is why you kind of see this disappear so if you also go over to insert you also notice that it sort of disappears and all you need to do is just rewire this back into the section and now you have that now if you also like to do you know you'd like to play a little bit more you can drop a simple transform right there and you can use the transform to transform things however you want so for those who are trying or you know you want to try this one you can simply use this to do some very cool stuff while we're talking about connecting stuff the folks at blender foundation also added the grid okay so right now instead of creating this all right instead of creating the plane you can now have yourself a simple grid and we can throw in that join node so let's do that join thingy so we can have that join node right here connect this bad boy there throw in a simple transform let's do a copy and paste of that one and uh, we're going to lock this one in there 
and we can choose to scale these back and forth meanwhile if you don't want to do that scaling there which i don't think it's necessary there is also a size section so you can use this to increase the size okay increase the x increase the y and also increase the subdivision that you have here so we can play with this one and make that seven by seven and this way you can start creating everything that you want directly from here with a simple geometry directly on your viewport and with this going there is also some updates to the modeling side of things but before we talk about updates to the modeling side of things the folks at blender foundation have also added a brand new map range node they've added a clamp node and also a couple of other nodes so for those who would like to also grab a couple of groups and use those groups to work with stuff right now that is a huge possibility as you can actually go in and use these things for yourself there's also improvements to the naming of domains and this is pretty pretty nice now for those who would also like to create things like curves, you want to play with curve, you want to use the taper mode option that exists right now, you can actually do a couple of operations right there. So within the taper radius, you can make some changes and you can also play with things like the multiply, the addition and also override. And for those who are also excited about the geometry node, there's also a couple of updates that deals with that. So just in case you want to read up on the new prototypes that is coming over to the geometry node, there's going to be a couple of links in the description that'll take you over to places where you can read about the collection node prototype, which is being in works. And these things that exist within the modules. And you can also read about the hair nodes. Blender 2.93 will be getting into Beacon 3 in the coming days. So 14th of April, Blender 2.93 will be getting into the Beacon 3 phase, which simply means that these this time it's going to be bug fixing only so any feature that hasn't made it up until this time may potentially not come over to blend at 2.93 once it jumps right into beacon tree so just in case you experience any bug while using this simply report it to folks at blender foundation and this would help make blender even better for those who like to work with some add-on we have a couple of free stuff for you guys today but before we talk about the add-ons and free stuff that we have this is also something i missed telling you guys previous week so the blender geometry node does have a couple of you know sample files which you can get actually they're demo files so you can get them practice with them and get good with them and for every other sector of blender there are also demo files that exist so you can also check these ones and see how you can make good use of them and now let's talk about add-ons this is a free cool add-on from the folks at brave rabbit and we've talked about lights today and for those who would like to you know place lights you want to use lights you want to place some cool reflections onto your model this is a very cool add-on that you can get for free all right you can get this one for free and you can also use this for your own you know product shot and you can use it for your scene building and all that beautiful renders that you're thinking about so a huge shout out to the folks at brave rabbit for making this one possible and as well blender market sales is going on right now so if you're into purchasing add-ons and you want to get some cool add-ons and you want to get them at 25 percent off they have lots and lots of cool add-ons that you can get right here and you can actually take a look at some of the top selling add-ons and see which of them suits you if you want to see more of the add-ons that is available on sale right now i'm going to put a link in the description that will take you right over here where you can check it out and if there's any add-on you want to get for 25 percent off you have now till the end of april the 11th and with that said for those who like to work with bezier curve you know we already talked about something that deals with bezier today there is a blender Bezier utility tool that you can get. I'm also going to put this one in the description so you can check it out. And this is something that you can get on GitHub right now. So, for anyone who is excited about creating stuff with Bezier, you want something that can help you create these things easily. And maybe you don't really rely or you don't really trust how you can work with these things in Blender. This one is right here for you. I'm going to pull links to this so you can check it out. And with this set, the creator of the sculpt layer for Blender has also done something pretty, pretty pretty incredible so we've already talked about the sculpt layer for blender today we are seeing that he has released a b sphere so he released something called b sphere for blender and this is to mimic exactly the kind of operation that you would get while working with either 3d coat or with zbrush so just in case you're a fan of this or maybe you want to use this then you might simply also check this one out i'm also going to put a link to this one in the description so in case you want to see any of the stuff that he has created before you can take a look at the sculpt layer for blender and also B Sphere for Blender. And this is more like it. For those who would like to work with the folks at Blender Foundation, right now there is still an opportunity that is available. So if you're a Blender 3D generalist and you have about five years working experience and preferably you live somewhere around Amsterdam, 
right now you have an opportunity to dust up your CV and send it over to the folks at Blender Foundation and avail yourself an amazing opportunity to work with the creators of these beautiful tools. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And for those who like to get all of this cool stuff that we've talked about as well, link to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check these things out. Tell me what you think about this and if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.